Hey everybody, welcome back to City's Cape Brewing. I'm Dennis Fields, and today we're talking robust porters. We're gonna be brewing a vanilla porter. Porter? I barely even know her. This one here is a little bit different. I didn't do a brew day video on this, but I made a porter with uh, peanut butter powder and toasted coconut, which turned out absolutely amazing. I actually got second place in an internal competition that we did for this. This is the same recipe that I'm using today, except for I'm going to be using vanilla. And you can do that one of two ways, either with vanilla extract or with vanilla beans. We're gonna opt to do the vanilla beans in the secondary, and I'm gonna show you how I prep those and how I add those to the secondary to get that vanilla flavor. But this recipe is really versatile because you can use that toasted coconut and the peanut butter powder, or one or each or both if you wanted to, and just kind of mix it up. I'll talk a little bit about how I added each one of those different ingredients that we're not doing in the brew day today. But first, we're gonna get our strike water ready. We're gonna get it heated up and we're gonna go through a very quick brew day today, talking through the steps. If you're new to brewing, please go check out my all grain brewing video, which is really step-by-step -step instructions out of the whole brew day process. You're gonna get a lot more uh, explanation on each step of the brew day versus what I'm gonna do in today's video. But we'll go through it step-by-step -step all the way down to pitching the yeast, and then we'll talk a little bit about your secondary additions, whether that be the vanilla, or will that be toasted coconut, peanut butter, etc. Grab yourself a beer, hit that like and subscribe button, and stay tuned. Quick tip about brewing in the colder months. If you keep your equipment outside or if your equipment's cold because you're bringing it outside and it's chilly, I do my brewing in my garage. I leave some of my equipment out here, not all of it, but if it gets cold, especially your, your uh, mash tun, um, I suggest putting a little bit of warm water in it. So I use my Rubbermaid uh, cooler mash tun and I actually have just warm water right out of my tap just to kind of warm up the inside of this. It doesn't need to be boiling. It doesn't need to be very hot. But what that does is gonna keep your mash temperature. Sometimes when you'll add your strike water, you'll put it in your calculator, you'll add everything in there and you'll realize that you're either your grains or your mash tun were cold and it dropped the temperature. And it's really difficult then to add hot water very quickly to warm it back up, especially because that starch conversion is really already happening. I'd rather err on the side of being a little warm in my mash than being a little cold. Add some hot water to your mash tun ahead of time and make sure your grains are stored inside or bring them inside to warm up anyway before you brew. As always, I will have the full recipe included in the video description below. You can go check that out anytime. All right, while our strike water is getting heated up, I'm gonna go ahead and start milling our grains. All right, we have just hit our 168 degree water or so that I'm gonna be using to mash in. Uh, it's ready to go. Again, we've dumped the water out that we used to warm up my mash tun here. So you don't leave that in there. That's just really to take the chill out of the uh, mash tun itself. We're gonna go ahead and dump this in and then uh, mash in our grains. Get our grains going here. See those chocolate malts going in there. And what really makes this one, and why I really like this recipe in particular and why I use it all the time, is because of the honey malt. So I add about two pounds of honey malt into this recipe it really makes it. I mean, it, it really helps the uh, the chocolate notes and the other um, adjuncts that you might be using, like vanilla and stuff, really get, it kind of enhances the flavor, I think, a little bit. It gives it a little bit more sweetness. So uh, check that out. But go ahead and make sure we don't have any dough balls in here. We're gonna see where we're at with our temperature and then let this rest, do its thing for 60 minutes. Take a temperature reading, see where we're at. It's supposed to be at 154, and we are right on 154. 
Perfect. So we're gonna get the lid onto this fast as we can and do our rest for 60 minutes. Um, and I will come back after that gets done to do our first runnings. All right, so we're about halfway done with the mash. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a quick stir around. Uh, I have my strike water heating up with our water additions in it already. Um, now is a good time to go ahead and get your hop additions. We're using an ounce of cluster and Willamette. I've got those measured out already. Uh, I'm gonna be adding a, a Werflock tablet in this as well. And then if you're using liquid yeast, go ahead and pull it out. In this case, uh, for this recipe, we're using Safeale USO5. So not as important to pull it out. I still pull it out of the refrigerator and just kind of let it warm up to room temperature. Uh, so you can go ahead and pull out your yeast. Uh, but go ahead, grab that and another beer, of course, because we still got about 30 minutes before we do our Vorloff and our sparge process. All right, our mash is done. We got our sparge water transferred over into our other rubber making cooler so we can free up our kettle. That's how I do it, you can do it a different way. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a good stir up and we're gonna start our Vorloff process. And actually, just to be curious, I'm gonna check the temperature after I mix it up here and see where we're at temperature wise and see what it dropped in 60 minutes given that we warmed that up ahead of time. So just cause I'm curious, let's do her. I expect it to lose a little bit over an hour. And the most of your starch conversion actually happens at the beginning of your mash, to be honest. So like the first 15 minutes really. So if this still is at 152, that's pretty good. For this temperature, 152 is pretty good being um, that it's pretty chilly outside. So let's go ahead and get this thing started. So what I use is a recirculation tool. If you haven't watched that video on how I made this, um, I kind of upgraded the, the uh, uh, pictures a little bit, but it's essentially the same thing. So this is basically a, uh, a way for me to continuously uh, rotate and recirculate the wort as I am um, vorloffing. So what I like to do is open this valve up slowly, put my hose into the pitcher down here, and it'll help clarify your beer. So what I'm gonna do is fill this up probably about twice, maybe three times. Um, clarity, you know, is still important for a porter even though it's dark, so you don't get all those extra proteins and stuff. And so even though you're not gonna be able to tell as much if it's cloudy, um, you know, don't discount the fact that uh, a good Vorloff and recirculation is really important. So with this, basically what I do is I raise up this hose so it goes over the volume level. Then I pour this other pitcher in the top of here and it will trickle out onto that little screen and kind of um, ensure that there's no hole going right through the grain bed and allow me to keep filtering the beer down here. So again, we'll probably do this two or three times and then uh, transfer right to the kettle. All right, so you, you can't quite see this in the video, I don't think, but uh, we are, we're supposed to get about 2.71 gallons for our first um, running. So we're gonna have to go ahead and close that. That's about where we're at. Um, that's fully drained out basically. We're gonna do our sparge, uh, batch sparge. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cover this up so it kind of retains the heat while we're doing our 15 minute batch sparge. But I'm gonna take our extra water here for our strike water, which I've heated up to over 180 degrees because I want to get the grains to be over 170 once I dump this in. So go ahead and get that in there without spilling all over the place like I just did. And then I'm going to give this a good stir up, give it a 15 minute rest, do the same Vorloffing process we just did. And then I'm going to come back when we have our final uh, uh, boil amount and we'll start our boil process. All right, so we collected our 7.7 .7 gallons, which is what our calculator said we should get for final runnings. We have that going and we're gonna start our boil process. All right, as we're getting closer to boil, I went ahead and added my hop spider. This is the one that I use uh, if I only have a couple of ounces of hops, which this one only has two. So I think that should be fine. If I'm adding a whole lot of them, I use my DIY hop spider. Go ahead and check that video. I'll put that in the video description below. Uh, also, don't forget to add some uh, firm cap, which is this uh, stuff here. You add about a teaspoon or so uh, right before boiling and it helps kind of dissipate the um, bubbles on the top. So that will 
help for any uh, prevent any boil overs, uh, both when it starts boiling and when it uh, when you add hops for your first time. All right, we're just now getting to a pretty rigorous boil. boil. So we're gonna just go ahead and turn down the temp a little bit. Watch it so we don't get a boil over still, but uh, the firm cap's doing its job. And then we're gonna go ahead and add our first addition of cluster hops, which is one ounce at 60 minutes. So we'll grab those. Give it a last snifferoni. Mmm, smells good. Dump those guys right in there. And give her a good stir again, watching that temperature. Just in case we need to turn it down a smidge. I also give it a good stir right inside this thing here. I haven't had to turn it down, but I'm getting a little nervous because it's a pretty full boil, so. But no, I didn't have to turn that down really at all, it's just uh, firm caps doing its thing. We'll keep that going for uh, 60 minutes. Our next hop addition is at five minutes, but I'm gonna throw a Wurflock tablet in there about 15 minutes, and then we'll add our last hop addition and start cooling her down. All right, we have about 15 minutes left in the boil. I'm gonna go ahead and add our Wurflock tablet here. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and throw that in. Some people crush it up, I, it dissolves really quickly. No need to do that. Um, in my opinion, uh, you can if you want to. And go ahead and give that just a good stir around. All right, last round of Willamette hops. Give her a last sniff. Mm, these are so good, I love these. Uh, go ahead and dump those things in. And we're gonna give her a good stir around for the last five minutes. And then we're gonna start cooling it with our immersion chiller. All right, we have this cooled down and it's under 80 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and transfer this into our carboy. It's all cleaned and sanitized, of course, uh, including this, this uh, screen. If you've ever watched any of my videos before, you know that I use the screen you know, primarily to aerate, but it also catches a little bit of the junk that might've gotten through our hop spider or anything else, any, any pieces of grain or something like that that made their way into the, the boil kettle. This will help screen all that stuff out, but it also does a great job of aeration. All right, we're gonna take a little sample again for our refractometer and uh, see where our final gravity's at. And then we'll pitch our yeast and get her moving. I'm gonna put this in our fermentation chamber behind me here so we can get it down uh, to 67, which is our fermentation temperature, and uh, we'll be right back. All right, we are in our fermentation chamber here. I've got the everything hooked up, just about to sprinkle in our USO5. I sanitized uh, scissors, cut that open quick. I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle that in. Um, I'm gonna gently sprinkle it on the top. I try to stay away from that uh, uh, tilt hydrometer a little bit, but that's okay if it gets on. We're gonna give it a little shake here in a minute. And then I kind of let that sit like this on the top and then I'll come back after I put the lid all the way on it and I will give it a good shake um, just to kind of mix it all in. Notice I do have my lizard lamp in there and a dehumidifier. Super important this time of year to have the lizard lamp because it's gonna get cold in my garage at night and that will actually keep the beer from getting too cold during fermentation. The, uh, for the de uh, humidifier will keep all the moisture out of there, prevent any molding issues, that kind of thing. But this time of year is really why you wanna have that lizard lamp in there. If you haven't seen that video on how to make this fermentation chamber, go check that out. I'll have that in the video description below. All right, guys, last but not least, we gotta do a hydrometer uh, test or a refractometer in my case to see where we're at gravity-wise at the end of our boil here. This will be our original gravity. And it looks like our expected original gravity was supposed to be about 1056. So let's see where we're at. 
It looks like we are at about 1058. So only about two points over. Um, that's okay. We were a little bit over on our pre-boil gravity, which was just fine too. So we got better efficiency than we thought, which was fine. So I expected it to be a few points higher. Actually, this is closer than I thought it was going to be. Um, yeah, it's about the same. All right. I went ahead and I recorded that at 1058. Um, our tilt hydrometer says 1057, so that's very, very close. I would use the refractometer reading over the, the uh, tilt because that's going to be close, but not as accurate as our refractometer will be. So we'll be back when primary fer fermentation is done to add the, the vanilla beans. Hey guys, now we're back after post fermentation. So I've pulled out our carboy. I've let it kind of sit and settle. We're gonna transfer that into a secondary today. And today we're gonna to be prepping our vanilla beans here. We have two of them that are gonna be going into our secondary. Optionally, if you don't wanna buy vanilla beans because they are expensive, these were about 12 bucks for two of them. So about $6 a piece. If you don't wanna do that, it's totally fine to use extract. If you're gonna do that, I'd prefer you do it in the keg. So what I usually do is add about 3.5 teaspoons, not tablespoons, but teaspoons or 17 milliliters to the keg and then rack the beer on the keg. <clears throat> That's going to give you the most bang for your buck when it comes to the flavor in the keg so it doesn't drop out into a secondary. Can you add it to a secondary? Yes, you absolutely can do that. I've done that before just fine, but normally if I'm just adding regular flavoring and I want it to be full and, and there uh, towards the end so it doesn't fade because sometimes extracts and even regular vanilla beans will do that, I would add that directly to the keg. So 3.5 teaspoons of vanilla extract. Make sure you use a good vanilla extract. But today we're gonna be prepping our vanilla beans and I'll tell you a few things that you're gonna need to have. So first you're gonna need to have vanilla beans, of course. I have also opted to use a paint strainer bag. You don't have to use this, but this will help keep out any of the particles and things after we cut this up from, uh, from getting sucked up when we rack this into our keg later on. So I'm gonna be putting that into a paint strainer bag. Uh, I have this sanitized already. You're gonna need a small bowl uh, like this, sanitized, a knife to cut the vanilla beans up, and a cutting board, which I've also sanitized. Again, this is post-fermentation, so there is alcohol present, but we are still worried about adding you know, bacteria into it. So with the vanilla beans, we're gonna be using uh, and making a tincture. So you're also gonna be using a smidge of vodka. Doesn't matter really what kind you use. You're really just putting a very small amount in order to kill any of the bacteria on the beans. So without further ado, let's get these things cut up and we'll show you how to do it. All right, so we have our vanilla beans out. What I'm gonna do first is actually take our little bowl here, and I'm gonna put the paint strainer bag all the way around it. That way when we put anything in there, whether this is the paste that's in the inside or the seeds or anything, it's gonna go right in here, and then we'll take this off and wrap it all the way up at the end. So put that off to the top of the cutting board here, and then I'm gonna take my beans, we're gonna slice them lengthwise down the middle of the bean. Like this. Okay, we're gonna do that both directions, all the way in half. And what we're really trying to do is expose the inner portion of the bean, which has all the seeds and kind of the, uh, the uh, um, sludgy stuff that's on the inside, kind of the uh, um, jelly-like inside that has all the, the flavoring. Right, so we're really the the idea is just to expose as much of this to the beer as possible. So take it back your knife and scrape this stuff off. It looks like this, and then you're gonna put it right in this bowl, okay? And this is the stuff that we want to contact our beer. So we're gonna want to get every part of that stuff out, or as much as possible anyway, out and inside of this bowl. That is the most flavorful part of the bean itself, but we will be cutting up the bean into small pieces. Uh, as well. So scrape that inside out, both sides here, and you can really smell the vanilla, it's really nice. And these are Madagascar vanilla beans, you can use, you know, whatever you can find locally, but uh, these are a good flavored bean and they're pretty popular somewhere you'd be able to find those. So scrape out those beans. Then what we're going to do is actually cut these up into small pieces, okay? And uh, it doesn't have to be perfect or anything like that, but we're really just trying to get surface area 
for the beer to latch onto and soak out all that vanilla flavoring from this bean. And what I'm gonna do is after I get this cut up, I'm gonna put all these things into that paint stringer bag and do the exact same thing with the second bean. So take all these pieces, put them all into that paint stringer bag here. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing I just did with the second bean, and then we'll be right back. All right, so now that we've gotten all of our beans cut up, all of that pasty stuff that was on the inside, we're going to add a little tiny bit of vodka in order to just barely cover these and kill any natural bacteria and stuff that's on these, on the outside of the beans, even though they're packaged and, and uh, um, vacuum sealed and even have a little uh, plastic container in there, there might be something wild growing on this thing and we just want to kill that off before we add it into our beer. So the vodka will also help pull out the, the vanilla flavoring. So what we're gonna do is push the paint strainer bag as far down to the bottom as we can. So we don't want to add a lot of vodka. And then we're gonna to wanna to spread these things out. We wanna be able to basically put as little vodka in this bowl as possible. So make sure you have it all pressed down to the bottom. You don't wanna to have to fill this whole bowl up with vodka. What we're really trying to do is add just a little tiny bit that we can slosh around a little bit and, uh, and cover the vanilla beans. So we'll add a little bit of this. Again, just a little tiny bit. We can always, as long as you're hitting everything, we can always kind of move it around in there. I don't like adding a ton of vodka into my beers, but I like doing this for certain things like peppers or vanilla, vanilla beans, excuse me, um, because this is probably the best way to sanitize it um, without losing any of the flavor because we're actually gonna dump whatever remaining uh, vodka kind of soaks out of here into the fermenter as well. So we're gonna let that kind of soak in there. Um, just for you know probably 20 minutes or so just gonna let that sit what i'm gonna do in the meantime is actually take this uh, paint turner bag and pull it up and tie it closed and that way when we put it in there all these things stay in the paint strainer bag and uh and nothing gets pulled out into our racking cane when we rack it to our keg so i'm going to carefully flip this thing back inside out and tie it shut All right, so we have our sanitized carboy and our racking cane, uh, our auto siphon right there. This is our tincture we just made. I'm gonna go ahead and put this right into the fermenter right now, and then dump any of this vodka as well right into the carboy ahead of time. So go ahead, we got that in there. That's good. Then we're going to uh, take out our tilt hydrometer. Um, right now the tilt says we're sitting at about uh, 1014, which our final gravity is supposed to be about 1011. And again, these can be a couple points off. So we're gonna do a hydrometer reading just to make sure and see where we're at for real. And then I'm gonna actually use the same bowl and a sanitized tongs to pull out that tilt real quick. Set that in there and then we're gonna go ahead and rack this. And then while I'm racking it, I will grab a hydrometer reading to see what the actual gravity is. Again, it can drop a couple of points in the secondary, so I'm okay with it being a little bit high. Plus, if at 1014, this beer is supposed to be a little bit of a sweeter porter beer anyway, so if it only gets to 1013 or 1012, I'm totally okay with not getting down all the way to 1011 like Brewer's friend said we were gonna to get to. So no big deal, let's go ahead and rack this thing, put it into super speed. All right, make sure the lid is sealed tight and then back into the fermentation chamber we go. Thanks for watching my video. I really do appreciate it. Another couple ways that you can help support the channel is by hitting that like and subscribe button. 
You can also check out the merchandise in our store. I have other shirts. We got glassware, we got stickers, hats, sweatshirts, etc. Go check it out. Also, hit that video here. You know you want to.